Hello everyone, Winston here, Welcome you to another episode of Watchtower Examination. Because I have never been a Jehovah's Witness, naturally there's going to be some things I don't fully understand about the organization and about witnesses. And so having completed a video recently commenting on the 2020 memorial, I asked a question in the video. As a matter of fact, I asked a number of questions. And I have a good friend who is an ex-Jehovah's Witness who gave me a call to give me some answers. But even before he called me, there was something that viewers helped me to understand. Because I questioned when the speaker said that we will now observe and there was a black screen. I thought that there were some folks who were gathered where he was and so... Because when, you, when I went to JW.org, I was given the option to either visit, to go, or to attend, or to view online. Obviously, I chose view online, so I assumed that there were those who attended. I thought that the gentleman was on location where the ceremony is being held, and that we were going to see the persons. We were actually going to see the actual event where people are actually eating and drinking the emblems. But I was to learn that the talk is pre-recorded and when the screen went blank is when Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide would have now participated. Well, when my friend called me, he recognized that I was asking a number of questions like, how could witnesses not see this? And he was explaining to me the, the depth of the indoctrination. How they take the scriptures out of context and very subtly, it is like, you know, the frog in boiling water. It doesn't jump out if you put it in hot water, but if you put him in a cold pot and gradually warm it, he stays there and is boiled to death. A similar thing happens with witnesses that the indoctrination is so subtle that witnesses do not see because the organization tells them that the New Testament was written exclusively for the anointed. So when Paul and the other apostles or epistles were writing to the church in the first century, naturally they were speaking to anointed. So the scriptures were written for the anointed. You know, it sounds bizarre for people like myself who's never been a witness, but witnesses will understand. And that is how they manage to effectively do the indoctrination. But when I now heard that the blank screen was indicative of when people at home would observe, I asked a question. So what do they actually have the bread and the wine with them? Even if they're gathered in a small group where there is absolutely no anointed? And the amazing answer was yes. If you are not going to have the bread and the wine, you are gathered with a bunch of folks and none of you is anointed. Why do you have the bread and the wine? If you are not going to eat it, you're not going to drink it, you're not anointed, what are you doing with it? And I was told that they will pass it around among themselves. So that this is officially a, a rejection ceremony. So that even if there is no anointed there, you must have the bread and the wine to reject. Not to eat, but to reject. But someone posted a comment at the video and I thought, wow. The person said that, can you imagine witnesses 
throwing the wine down the drain? The wine that represents the blood of the Lord? Throwing the bread in the garbage bin? Really? That I thought was really over the top. But my friend indicated to me that no, they will eat it. And I'm asking, I'm getting confused. How do you mean they will eat it? They are not anointed. They are told not to have it. That Jehovah will be upset with them if they eat it and drink it. So how do they do it after the ceremony? And my friend said one of the most nonsensical things to me. The ceremony is over. So no, they can no, no, they can eat it. What? Ladies and gentlemen, let us open the word of God to the book of Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. I want you to pay attention to two things. As they were eating, they were already eating. Jesus took bread and blessed it. It was when the bread was blessed that it now represented the body of Christ. At our memorial service, we call it the communion service. At our communion service, the bread and the wine presented there to be had is not considered to be emblems of the Lord's body and blood until they are blessed. An actual blessing, a prayer of blessing is prayed that the emblems be now sanctified. They now represent the body and the blood of Jesus. They are now sacred emblems for worship. So it doesn't matter that the ceremony is over. You cannot remove the sanctity from the blessings. You can't say the service is over so it is no longer blessed. You cannot say the service is over once the final prayer. The final prayer is not a de-sanctification of the emblems. So how is it then that you are not supposed to partake of the emblems, but you partake of it? The entire thing is becoming more and more and more bizarre. When King Belshazzar went to the temple and took the holy vessels to use in his party, the Lord was angry at him. He was a wicked man. He was a wicked king. But with all the wickedness that he did, the night that he got the anger of the Lord was the night he went into the temple and took the holy things. Belshazzar could have said, they are not holy anymore because there's no worship service going on in the temple. I just went to borrow them. They're not sacred anymore. He could not use any such argument. In, in fact, he never had a chance because that night he was slain. The kingdom was taken from him. An evil king. He did a lot of evil things, but it was when he messed with what was holy that the Lord had enough of him. The Lord complained bitterly about Israel's priests who would not make a difference between the holy and the profane. The Lord places a high regard on that which is holy. The children of Israel were told not to touch the Ark of the Covenant. And you know what happened to that one man who touched it when he saw that it was falling? He was struck dead instantly. The Lord has a high regard for that which is holy. When the Lord blesses something, it is blessed forever. Not because the ceremony is over, the emblems are still sacred. And so witnesses are now in a pickle, in a serious predicament where, like Belshazzar, you are weighed in the balance and found lacking. So you are caught in a, between a rock and a hard place, witnesses, because if you eat the emblem, you are doing what you are told by the watchtower not to do. 
And if you throw it away, if you throw that down the drain, if you put that in the garbage bin, not only are you rejecting the emblems that represent the body and blood of the Lord, but now you are actually adding insult to injury. This is a very dangerous ceremony that you are engaging in. And I, I, I just could not believe when I learned all of this. So what I thought was bad is actually much, much worse. And your only way out, witnesses, is to come to understand that as long as you are baptized into Christ, you belong to Christ and you are Abraham's seed. Which now brings me to the other bizarre thing in Watchtower World. My friend reminded me last night that witnesses are not baptized into Christ. They believe that only the anointed, who were never, when they got baptized, baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but baptized in the Spirit-directed organization, they now become baptized into Christ because they are anointed. It just gets more and more insane. That is not true. So you need to, you probably need to now get rebaptized as Ali did from Ali's Big Toe YouTube channel, who was disfellowshipped because she chose to get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She chose to get baptized into Christ. So now you have a more serious issue on hand. You're not even properly baptized. So this is really a much bigger issue than I, than I thought. I thought I was just calling witnesses to the Lord, but no, it seems I have to be calling witnesses to repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Because this, this is no proof positive that you are in an evil organization that is anti-Christ. You are not baptized into him. You reject the, his body and his blood. And then, as it were, you have it unworthily or you throw it away, you dispose of it. These are sacred emblems. Do you understand what it is when the Lord sanctifies or something? Or is it that your bread and wine at your memorial are not blessed. What is happening here? But all I can tell you is that this thing is even worse than I actually thought. And I pray for your sakes. I know it is a really difficult situation you're in. I pray for your sakes that you will wake up, that you will come to your senses, and that you will leave that organization it is evil thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed it remember to press that like button i invite you to subscribe to the channel i am also inviting you to subscribe to my other channel things jamaican that will help to keep this channel going the links are in the description below thanks again do come again have yourself a wonderful day May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.